So at this point, we've got data that we can show. And now I want to start to delete some data. The delete button at least should work that we get some console output. The way that this will work is, according to the PouchDB specification is, in order for us to delete a record, we have to reference its ID. So we are using CRN as the unique identifier for every document. So in theory, if I were to type XYZ and delete, it would delete that document. If I were to type 123, it would delete that document. So the, the way that this works in Pouch is that we need to first check, is there a valid document to delete? If there is a valid document to delete, then we'll delete it. So that actually means we first need to get a document to see if it exists, then delete it. So in our code, in our delete class function, after the console log, which you can delete or comment out, um, well, a person typed in the name of a class there. So we need to store its value. So we'll do var, where we will uh, request that um, that name, that number, whatever they typed. We're going to create a variable to hold that. And we haven't done it this way, but we will do this. Dollar the class. I'll explain why in a moment. Equals then a jQuery reference to the delete um, CRN input field dot val. a variable slightly differently named than before, using jQuery, the input field's name, and then val. Previously, when we were going to save the class, we did something similar. Val, using the jQuery selector, getting its value and saving it into a variable. Um, <coughs> Here, we're doing pretty much the same thing, but notice we've got the dollar symbol there. And that is simply um, to tell ourselves that we've created a variable based on a jQuery uh, selector. So we didn't do that at the beginning, and it didn't matter. If we do this without the dollar symbol, it still won't matter. So either style will work. What I'm saying here is, because I've used jQuery, as the selector, then I'm making a variable with a little kind of jQuery prefix. Some documentation and tutorials and such do this. So I just want to show this to you because if you ever see this on some tutorial and never explain it, it is simply just one convention that some people use when creating a variable based on jQuery, a jQuery query. The class, dollar the class, is what's going to hold what the person typed in the box. Next line, db.get, the get method of, of pouch, we need to first get, does that class exist? If it does, then delete the class. If it doesn't, do something about it. So our first parameter here then is uh, the class, comma, same syntax as before, function callback, braces and such, either we get an error or we get a result. Same syntax as before. So try to get a class, whatever they typed, either it will be an error or a result. So here conceivably, what if no one, what if a person types nothing in the box? That would result in an error, so we would deal with the error. If they typed in a proper class, it would result in a positive result. If they typed in a class that didn't exist, that would be an error. So we deal with that result. We're going to break up that curly brace there so that we can deal with all of this via if-else statements and such. But if we are able to delete the, um, the class, we'll have db.remove. Remove actually removes the data from the database. Mm -hmm. 
we're trying to remove result. Um, we will deal with this error in a moment, but here if it worked, it will pass that object into remove, where we will actually remove the class in question. That has its own function, callback. Same as before. So notice we have to see if the class exists, then actually <coughs> remove it. Result. So now we will deal with here the error or the real result. So break that curly brace one more time. And here we will have an if conditional statement, if else. If result. If we did get a result object, if we did get something that properly worked, that we did remove the class, that's the first if part. Or else then else it didn't work. We got the we got the error. Um, we got the error result. Let's say console.log result. show that result object. So what this would do is if it really did delete the class, it would remove it from the database. But it wouldn't change anything on screen. On screen it would still have the old version of the table. The table that still has that class that I just deleted. So after giving me some console output, I will run show classes. Show classes, remember, re show classes builds my table. So this will rebuild the table with the newest data in my database, which should exclude the last class that I deleted. Well, if all of this failed, then we have to deal with else console.log what is that error? Give it to me in the console. For the user, I want an alert. You know, give them back some feedback that says, this didn't work. Perhaps why? Most likely the why that this didn't work is that they didn't type in the proper CRN. So we will say that that doesn't exist. So we'll say the CRN space plus um, the class does not exist. So the person is trying to delete a class that doesn't exist. We will see the error in the console. Then the user will get a pop-up that says the CRN that you typed, which we saved up there, does not exist on that alert box. Uh, I wanted to then say it didn't work, try again. We'll do backslash n. That'll create a new line. We've got this alert pop-up with one sentence, new line, next line, try again. Backslash n. That's an escaped character. It creates a new line. And also, well, that character that they tried to type isn't going to work. So on, in the delete CRN box, we'll set its value to empty, in, in essence, clearing the box. right there so that whatever they tried to type, it's not working, so let's delete it so they don't continue to try to delete something that doesn't work. That should be enough. So save it and run it.
Let's see, so I'll save it and run it. I've got a few classes here. Maybe I want to get rid of class ABC. So I'll type ABC, delete class. My console, it says about to delete. Then it gave me OK true. That's the result of deleting. OK true. A moment ago, I had eight rows because I was able to delete. Now it says you've got seven rows. And the table rewrote itself to display itself without that bit of data. So now let's say I don't want class 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6. Delete. Goes away. What if I want to delete class 9, 9, 9, 9? Delete class. Pops up. The CRN 9999 does not exist. Try again. It's down there. Once I click OK, the field cl clears itself out so that you don't try to type the wrong one in again. So I'm deleting these classes. I have to type again. Um, we'll have a more direct way, but at the moment, I have to type in the value of the class, and then I can delete it. Now let's say I'm trying to delete class ABC. Delete class. The CRN ABC does not exist. Yes, it does. I see it right there. Do I? I'm trying to delete class ABC lowercase, and there's a class in here called ABC uppercase. Not the same class. To the computer, it's two different things. Capital A is different than lowercase a. Capital A has ASCII character 65, and lowercase has like 97 or something. It's a different character. So again here, unless we program it, it doesn't do what exactly what we think. In our minds, we have this exact order of operations and such, but to the computer, unless you program it exactly, it doesn't know what you want. So there's various ways we can handle this, and here's a simple way. It won't fix all of the possibilities of what people do here, because again, okay, what if I type nothing, delete class, this doesn't see, it doesn't exist, I didn't type anything. So this won't fix all the user errors, uh, but one possibility is I'm holding whatever the person typed exactly as they typed it. And in the case that they typed a, an, an uppercase or a lowercase, I would have to deal with um, I would have to deal with uppercases and lowercases, right? So we have the functions, the JavaScript functions to lowercase and to uppercase. We are able to convert anything into uppercase or lowercase. Uh, so for this to be more complex, uh, for it to work, it would be more complex in that we would um, need to turn the data. Let's back up conceptually. At the very beginning, where I'm saving all my data way up on lines 34 and such, I'm saving the CRN as is, however, the person typed it. What I could do is I could convert that to lowercase early on. And then down here, when I'm trying to delete it, whatever they're typing in, turn that to lowercase. And I've got two lowercase things to delete, and then it would work. But if it's important for it to be uppercase and lowercase, I have to do more programming to save it in a format, maybe temporarily, so that it's uppercase and lowercase, then compare the two and delete. So. Again, this could be more complicated than it needs to be, but here's a possibility. This is optional. I'm going to add a line 82, and I'm going to say the class equals the class dot to lowercase method. So whatever the person typed will automatically get turned to lowercase, stored back in the variable. And now when I try to delete the class, if the class is lowercase, will be deleted. Again, this doesn't take into account what if a person typed uppercases, lowercases here and there throughout the CRN number. Um, it's a little bit more checking that we'd need to do. So
so um, see what I'm getting at that I've got class ZZZ and if I were to type ZZZ capital letters oops, down here ZZZ capital letters the to lowercase would make it lowercase to be able to delete it Spell it right, of course. Capital C. To lower case. So I'm trying to delete class ZZZ, I'm trying to delete it in capital letters, and it did it because it looked, put it to lowercase. The opposite, which is if I've got ABC, capital letter, and I try to delete ABC, it won't work because that would be a different set of programming to take that into account. We're not going to quite cover it, that could be some extra credit for you. Uh, but it'll require doing some checking, saving an instance of the item to compare. Okay, so we have some ability here to delete from the database. We have save to the database, retrieve from the database, delete from the database. And now a big one, modify data in the database. Maybe I misspelled something here. Maybe I misspelled the instructor's name. Maybe like this. That would be better with a lowercase. I, I want to go back in and edit this data. So very similar to very similar to the um, to before. We'll have some input fields, but we will make it easier where I want to edit class XYZ. I'm going to be able to click on it and let me edit that row. This requires that we build up some more code, of course, but let's uh, talk about deleting classes. I mean, uh, modifying classes. Uh, in order for this to work, we'll back up to our uh, show, show table of classes because that's where we're building, that's where we created that you know, those input fields and so forth. We'll create something similar. So we'll back up to line 75. We'll add another piece to the string. Another HR. Uh, I'll do two this time just to... Of course I can be more visually interesting with some CSS, but here I'm dividing up the, the little sections. Next line, plus equals Same thing as before. This time I have, um, if, I, if I need to modify something in Pouch, it's similar to when I need to delete something. I need to check if the document exists and then I can modify it. So in a similar way here, I need to get the CRN number. But again, we'll make it easy so that you simply click and it'll populate the fields. But we're going to create a few more fields here that will hold the, the, um, the items. So, um, we create an input. Well, well, let's do it backwards. Let's create the button first, uh, just for a little bit of visual interest, and then the fields. So, button slash button. This is going to be. Um, update. This will update the, the data. It needs an ID. So we'll call this um, BTN update.
After that button, then we will create an input field type text. placeholder. This would be the CRN field and its ID. We'll call update CRN. We'll create another input field for the for the title of the class, and then the instructor. So another input, another type text, placeholder. Let me check here. We're calling it CRN class and instructor. Okay, so it can be anything but call class ID update class. And then one more input. Text placeholder. Instructor. And ID update inst. It's a pretty long line. It doesn't really fit on my screen. Do you see? There's a button, and then three input fields. An input field for the CRN, for the class title, and for the instructor. Running it and showing the class should be something like this. An update button, input fields, again it's a really long line, I can't show the whole thing, but there's the button, an input field, These, these IDs, you know, that update CRN, update class, update inst. So we'll need to make that button clickable so that it captures these fields. And first, we'll, this will be manual, uh, and then we'll make it automatic. Um, so let's scroll down. Uh, we need to do something very, very similar to line 80, where we have to first have the selector of the larger element and then the individual element, and then a function. So before I forget, line 97 ends my delete class function. So I'll write and delete class. 
and we'll start a new one here. That's the same sort of syntax. Something will trigger something. We could do body again. Uh, that is anywhere that you click on the body, then specifically that button, just as before. To show you, we could also be very s more specific about where we click. Remember that the um, um, this is this is going to be building for something more complex a little later. So we'll do it this way. We will do pound div results. Remember that div results is the spot on screen. Is the div is that placeholder that is displaying the table. We could still do quotes body to do something similar to what we're about to do. But based on what we're going to do a little bit later, which is to click on a row and edit that row, we're going to do it this way because this will target the actual element a little bit more specifically. We're still going to have a click. Here is where we will then provide uh, we call it BTN update. So we'll have our BTN update and then comma function. Update class sounds like a good name for this function. So we define it here. And this one will be a little bit detailed. So before I forget, I'm going to add the end update class. Let's save it and run it, and let's see that at least uh, that button is reacting. It won't quite work yet, but let's see if we click the button and we get in our console a little output there about to update class. Uh, I click the update and in the console I get about to update so at least this update button is being triggered. We have to do the same thing as before because it's a dynamically generated button we have to say well let's click first on an element that does exist. Div results does exist at the moment of runtime so search for that selector, first search for that object on screen first. Then search for an element called btn update. btn update is created inside of the div results, so then this works. We weren't able to directly say whenever we click on btn update because it didn't work at the runtime when this code was executed. Those fields, at the moment, we will need to fill them in manually. Uh, so whatever we filled into those fields then will help us then to modify something in the database like the delete or dot remove we have to delete something that exists so inside of the update class we need to define some variables of what has been typed into those fields VAR we'll call this update 
CRN. This is the updated version of the CRN, and that comes from on screen the input box update CRN. It's val, comma. Well, there's three boxes there, so we've got also update uh, class. Just a moment, let me back up to here to make sure our terminology. Uh, yeah, class CRN, class name. No, we're calling it name. Class name, update, update name. Doesn't matter, update name. That's based on selecting update class. Update CRN, update class. Yeah, I see there's a slight miss discontinuity in these names we've used, but as long as we can keep it straight, it doesn't quite matter. And I'm starting to lose track of them too. Anyway, update name. This is the updated name or the updated class. I suppose you should call it class, just like that. The value of that, one more, so comma. Notice the word comma <coughs> there because I'm using the same I'm using the same var keyword, creating these. Oh, and then actually based on what I said earlier, doesn't matter, but we'll call these with dollar because we're using jQuery to, to define them. So back up on that. Dollar update CRN is coming from that jQuery selector, its value. Dollar update name is coming from jQuery selector and its value. And then one more. Dollar update inst is coming from the jQuery selector. We're selecting update. No, not uh, yeah, that. Update. Now. And then we end the statement there. Obviously not necessary, but I like to do a little console output just to make sure this is working. Not very pretty output, but we should see whatever we type in those boxes in the console. If you want to save and run this, type some stuff. It doesn't have to be anything real yet. Type some things into those boxes. Click the button, and whatever you type in those boxes should show up in the console. If that's working, then what we'll do as well, we will go on with then updating what's in the database based on what we've typed in those boxes. Show classes, I'm just gonna type whatever into these boxes, update ABC, XYZ, 111, update, and it shows up here again. Not very pretty, I haven't programmed it to do that, doesn't matter, but I'm seeing ABC, XYZ, 111. I'm seeing what I'm typing in those boxes.
on the next line, db dot get. So we we're gonna we're gonna reuse get, which we used previously for deleting a document in the database. We're also gonna use it here for updating because now we need to do something special. We need to look at an existing document, um, add new data to the database, and a new revision number. Pouch keeps track of the different versions of your data. In order for it to be able to then be updated, it needs a new revision number. So if you're using first.get, we check, does it exist? Let's then try to um, update it based on a revision that exists and then give it a new one, version 2. So this is all basically coming from pouchdb.com, of course. And so here we're saying $updatecrn. That's what we're trying to change. Remember, everything is based on the ID. ID is currently being stored in updatecrn. This is the updated version. Uh, function callback as before. It's either going to have an error object returned or a result object returned. Break those curly braces. Here we will uh, do our error checking if else. We're looking for an error. If an error object is returned, deal with that, or else it was the positive result, deal with that. So we're going to say first, okay. Uh, if the person is trying to update a document that doesn't exist, what we will do is delete those, delete what they're trying to update, and then tell them this this class doesn't exist. So on screen, we'll just do it like this. Here's a little time saver. If you copy that whole selector right there, paste without the comma, and set that to blank. We're going to clear out their fields. Whatever they typed was wrong. So we're going to clear out their fields and give them feedback, meaningful feedback. So I'll copy each of those. Not the commas. They all are they all terminate there, so make sure you put semicolons on each of them. On the next line, then, we will give them some visual feedback, like that alert box that we did previously, which we can just copy and paste. So if you back up to where you've got, on mine is line 92, that same line about that CRM doesn't exist, try again. I'm going to copy it, change it just a little bit, but I want an alert. I wanted to say what class is the problem and to try again. So I'll just copy that. That worked before. Paste it in. And I need to change it. It's not the class anymore because we've got the we've got update CRN within this function. Update CRN is our is what is holding the CRN the ID that we're trying to update. So this error should be referencing update CRN. Save it and run it, and try to make the mistake happen, meaning don't put a real result yet. Don't put real class data yet. That'll be for the else.
So what I'm saying, I have all these classes to choose from, but I'm going to try to update class uh, 223, which gibberish, gibberish. Update should pop up. The CRN 223 does not exist. Try again. Click OK. I should clear my fields. That part of the of the if else statement is checking for for the error. If the error didn't occur, then the result must have occurred. So this else part will be the 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 block where it actually does update the database. We'll do db dot put. We used db put at the very beginning of the project when we were saving data the first time. We use put again. So put is used to put new data into the database as well as update existing data with one twist that we'll see. So we need to put then some JSON data which will give us back a function callback again with error or result We'll deal with that in a moment. Okay, so backing up on line um, thirty nine. We have db.put, and in that case, we're putting a class, and then we get the callback. Well, a class is a variable that is a JSON object with an ID, a title, and inst. Here, we're going to put a new version of that data. So we could have put all of these three bits of data into one new updated a class. But what we also need to do when we're trying to update data is provide a revision number. So we're not bundling it together in this way because we need to include the revision. So what I'll do is I'll break this, these curly braces. I could keep it on one line of course, but here's how it'll be nice and readable. Quotes underscore ID colon the, I'm sorry, update CRN. So whatever they wrote new, put it back into the database with the same ID, comma. And we've got title, the title of the class. Well, that's based on our new update name, comma. And then we've also got our inst field. That's based on uh, update inst. Because we're putting version 2 of the data, we need one more field here. Rev, underscore rev. This one's reserved. Just like you cannot use underscore ID for anything else, it has to be for the ID, the unique identifier. You cannot use underscore rev except for anything, except for the, uh, the revision number of your data. And this is based on what, um, what currently exists, then sort of like give it a new revision. And the way this works is we have result dot underscore rev. Result is the object right here. If, if getting the data worked, if that class exists, it gives you back the result. And all the time that we've been seeing in the console our data and a field called rev with a bunch of gibberish, now we're going to use it. 
that gibberish is our unique <coughs> identifier for our history of our data. So we're replacing new data and then basically giving a new revision to the data based on the existing revision number. That is the way it's written here. Closing. No, because it's the last item in the JSON object. It does not have a comma. It doesn't have a curly brace either because this is still part of put, and the curly brace ends right here. All of this still comes back to put. The comma of the JSON object. Just like our, just like our delete, this will delete it in the database, but it won't show it on screen until the person clicks show classes. Well, to do that for the user, I will add within the callback here show classes function. So do the put with the new version of our data and show the class, show the latest version of our database with the latest data. Let's see if that worked. Go ahead and save it and run it. I have class ABC, capital A, B, C, English to, and I should have spelled it Jones, comma, J, R, period. Update. Update. Let's say I have class X, Y, Z. That was actually English 1 with instructor Jones. Update. Updated. I have class TRWETTR. That should have been English 3 with instructor uh, Aquarius. Updated it. I would love to change this first one, but it's, I'm going to have a hard time typing it. I'm going to take a break soon because a better way for this, obviously, is I want to click on it to make it easier for me to, to to update. That's what's coming up next. I don't want to have to manually type this because again, if I type under lowercase abc English and change that to English and then Smith, it'll say abc doesn't exist. What I want to do after the break is I want to add a little button, a little edit button. And then I'm going to click on whatever I want to edit and those fields will fill themselves in. And then I just change what I want, and then I update. We're here doing it manually. We're seeing here, we need to reference, to delete a class, we need to reference an ID of a class that exists. To update a class, we need to reference an ID of a class that exists, exactly as it's typed. To save ourselves some of that, we will auto-populate fields just a moment. Um, let's say 30. Um, let's take one more break to 840. I'll put the latest version of my code. When we come back then we will deal with auto-populating our fields and other little things.